The following program is a production of the Fairfax Network, Fairfax County Public Schools. Welcome to Meet the Author. I'm your host, Emily Godfrey. Joining me in this studio is New York Times bestselling author, Lisa McMahon. And today is her birthday. Ah! Welcome, Lisa, and happy birthday. Thank you so much. It's the best place I could choose to be on such a day. Awesome. Also joining us via Skype are students from Glasgow Middle School. Hello, Glasgow. Hello. Hello. Hi, guys. Hello. Lisa has written over two dozen books for young adults and middle grade students. Some of her book titles include The Wake Trilogy, her fantasy fiction series The Unwanteds, and The Unwanted's Quest series. Dragonfire is the most recent book in that series. Well, Lisa, welcome. And would you like to start off by telling us a little bit about The Unwanted series? Sure. Well, uh, The Unwanted begins in the land of Quill, and Quill is a dystopian world, uh, and it's run by a ruler named the High Priest Justine, and she has outlawed creativity. So it's against the law uh, to do anything creative, whether it's singing or dancing or uh, even drawing in the dirt with a stick. Um, <laughs> It's against the law, yeah. and at the age of 13, if you're caught doing anything creative, uh, you'll be considered unwanted, and you'll be sent to your death. Oh, wow. And then that's... everyone dies, and that's the end. Oh my gosh, thanks for telling us the oh, whole story. Shoot. This is Wait, perfect. That's not what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, that's not what happens. <laughs> the end on page three. Yeah. No. <laughs> Where did you get the idea for this series? I got the idea from my kids, actually. Um, they came home from school one day when they were in fifth and third grade, and they had a letter in their backpacks, and the letter said, Dear parents, we are so sorry to tell you that we have to eliminate the arts classes at school oh, because no. of budget cuts. Yeah. And I remember reading this letter and looking at my kids and saying, Wow, kids, I'm so sorry. This kind of feels you know, like you're being punished for being yeah. creative because my son loves to draw and my daughter loves acting and singing. Yeah. And so I remember thinking at that moment, and this is what happens with authors a lot, I think, we ask, what if? Mm -hmm. Like, what if there really was a world where children were punished for being creative? And that came to my mind and I said it out loud. And my 12-year-old son said, not just punished, sent to their deaths. Ah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, and that's so heartbreaking because it happens a lot. Yeah. And a lot of kids really need those creative outlets For to sure. express who they are and their thoughts. Absolutely. And can you tell us about the Unwanted Quest series? How is that different? I, I understand it's like a follow-up. Exactly. Um, so the Unwanted Quest begins 10 years after the first series ends. Um, but it does stand alone as well. Uh, it has its own new set of twins, Pfeiffer and Thisbe Stowe, who are the younger sisters of Alex and Aaron Stowe. And they just happen to be the most magical people Artemis has ever seen. But their magic is destructive and dangerous. Oh. In fact, they almost accidentally killed their brother multiple times at oh, this no. point. And the people of Artemis are really scared to be around them, and yeah. they shun them a little bit. And that feels kind of bad for Thisbe and Pfeiffer. They just want to take magical warrior training, but they're not allowed to until they're 13. So oh. they're trying to prove that they can do good things with their magic and that they're worthy of taking the, the magical warrior training. And they set off with uh, a dragon who comes back from the first series and needs help. And they decide they're gonna go help uh, rescue the captive dragons in the land of the dragons. And they end up finding themselves in way more trouble than <laughs> you could imagine. Well, that sounds really exciting. I think mm -hmm. we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later in the show. Um, right now, I know our Glasgow students are super excited okay. to ask you some questions. So we are going to go to them right now. Hi, students, what's your name and what is your question for well, Miss McMahon? So I would just like to say happy birthday. Um, Thank so you. 
Julia, and one of my questions was, why did you choose, out of all the genres in books, why did you choose fantasy? You know, I've always loved reading fantasy. I really enjoyed um, the C.S. Lewis books, the Narnia oh, books yeah. when I was growing up. And I really loved books like Charlotte's Web. Um, where, you know, I thought that that could really be a real situation where if the right pig and the right girl and the right spider all kind of got together, <laughs> they could talk to each other. And I believed that. So I think that's always been part of who I am, just someone who believes in things that maybe seem a little fantastical. So when I wrote this first chapter, of the unwanted in this dystopian world, and it was very dark. You know, we've got Aaron and Alex standing there in the commons of Quill, waiting to find out are they wanted or unwanted, and they get split up. And um, you know, I, I I thought maybe this whole book was going to be dystopian, but it seems so dark that I thought, okay, now how are we going to get these kids out of this situation? How, what's going to happen with these unwanted? And the first thing that came to mind was the world of Narnia and that magical world and thinking, what if you could do magic with creativity, with your abilities? Um, and that's how that all came to be. So it didn't really, I didn't set out to write uh, a fantasy, but it became one. Well, and it's really cool because it sounds like that, that theme of what if, that mm -hmm. questioning really inspires you as an author. And I know a lot of people have, um, also use that strategy too, because mm -hmm. it sounds like, what if this happens with this? Yeah, absolutely. That's a question uh, I, I ask myself all the time. I'll just be walking along the sidewalk <laughs> and you know, I'll think, Oh, you know how sometimes when a tree has its roots growing under the sidewalk and yeah. it pushes it up, and I think, what if I could lift that up and there's another world down there? What oh, would happen? Yeah. What would that be like? And Ooh, I just, is that your next book? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I've used that as an example a few times, but uh, maybe someone else will write it. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we have another question from Glasgow. Hi, student. What is your question? Hello, I'm Aria. Um, I was wondering what your inspiration was for the characters, are, and are any of them based off of real people? Oh, uh, the inspiration for the characters. Um, well, first, with Alex and Aaron, I really wanted to have twins for two reasons. One was because I needed two kids to be very close uh, who were the same age, because at the age of 13, you're put into your categories. So I needed them to be both 13. And um, I chose twins because I've always been really fascinated by the twin connection. Some twins really feel like they can connect to their twin in a better, maybe not better, but a different way than other siblings can do. Like they can really understand what their twin is going through. So, um, I just wanted to explore that a little bit more, so I did some research on twins, and uh, so that was the inspiration a little bit for Ar Alex and Aaron. And as I was writing, I just kind of felt like, oh, I need this kind of character next, or I need this kind of character next, and um, it's, it takes me a little while to think about who that character really is deep inside. But uh, it's all part of a, creation, a creative process for me as well. Do you do any sort of like character maps of, you know, like when you're talking about what kind of character you want, how do you organize that in your mind? Well, I like to write a, a biography of a character. Oh, very cool. Yeah, just a short one. It never makes it into the books, but it tells me what happened to that character before the story begins. Like what things have happened in their life to affect the way they make choices now. Yeah. Yeah, so. Wow, okay, so we have another question from Glasgow. Hi, what's your question? Hello, my name is Peter, and my question is, are there any characteristics of yourself that you put into any of your characters? Oh, mm. any characteristics of myself? Well, yes, I think that there's a little bit of me in all of the characters, even, even the evil ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, there definitely are, but not, I wouldn't say that any one particular character is me at all in a big way. Um, but definitely, and it, uh, people I know as well will find themselves having a little characteristic put in into a character of, of the story. 
Can they identify that? Can they, uh, like, is this me? Do they ever Usually, no. That? No? <laughs> no. I, I, I don't think uh, anyone's ever asked me that, but um, <laughs> I have told a few people that, you know. And mm -hmm. for instance, I think we talked about different characters too, like the names and inspiration for mm -hmm. that. Like Marcus today uh, is um, named after someone in real life. So Marcus uh, is the, um, he was the uh, acting teacher for Kennedy in one of the shows, my daughter Kennedy, uh, when she was doing youth theater. Oh, cool. So um, we have one more question from Glasgow. Hi, student, what is your question? Um, hello, my name is Wesley, and if you're not able to write fantasy, what genre would you write? Hmm, if I'm not able to write fantasy. I've tried a lot of different genres. Uh, I've written some realistic fiction, and I really enjoy that, so I might go back to doing that again. I've written some science fiction. Um, I did a time travel book with a whole group of authors called The Infinity Ring. So that was really fun to explore time travel in sort of a science fiction way. And um, yeah, you know, so I, I think probably I would stick with fantasy if I had a choice and would probably keep it um, maybe a little less uh, of a whole different world that doesn't exist and maybe more in a world that's more similar to what we live in, but still make it somewhat fan, uh, fantastical. Well, those are some awesome questions. Thank you, Glasgow. We will come back to you a bit later in the show for some more, okay? So do you have a question for Lisa McMahon? Join the conversation and give us a call. So Lisa, you use figurative language so well in your books, and it's so powerful the way you use it. Um, we have some examples that I'd like to highlight for you. So our first example is, his heart fell like a cement block. <laughs> so how, how did you come up with that idea? You know, I, I think it's um, something that authors try to do so that we're not saying the same thing every time about how does this feel? You know, his stomach was in knots or butterflies or whatever. Those are a lot of common things. And I wanted to try and think of something that would portray that feeling. Uh, and this line comes from the first chapter of book one where Alex is standing there and he's finding out that he's unwanted and the governors are coming to chain his wrists. And, and you know, so this is a moment that is sickening to him. Yeah. And I wanted to just, I wanted to, that thud that you feel inside when you find out that something terrible is happening to you. Um, I wanted to figure out how that would feel and I thought of that, like something really heavy just kind of sinking inside. And you definitely could feel it. Like when you read yeah. that line, you can feel that. Oh, good. <laughs> um, I have another one. This one is, Aaron's face looked like a troubled sea. Hmm. I like that one a lot. Where it's was so your dramatic. I know. Where was your inspiration <laughs> for that? Um, I, you know, I love the sea. First of all, so that probably ha played a part in it. Um, a lot of my books, as you know, the kids might already realize, have the sea in them in some way, especially in the Unwanted series. Um, but uh, I just love looking at the sea, at the ocean. I love especially when a storm is coming and all the waves grow dark, you know, and it's so interesting how the colors change when a storm is coming in, the way the, you know, the sun leaves mm -hmm. and so the reflection off of a blue, beautiful blue ocean or lake or whatever turns dark green and gray and I just think that's probably where that came from. Okay, I have one more for you. This one is watched Aaron like a dog watches it go for whole. <laughs> I just I just feel like you can really see that tenacious look, you know, yeah. that, that exacting stare. Is that what you were going for? For sure, yes. And that was probably, that description probably came to me on one of my walks. I take a lot of walks mm -hmm. to, you know, kind of clear my head and get ideas and maybe probably saw something like that <laughs> happening and then just kind of took a little note on my phone and to use for phrases to use sometime in a, in a story. Well, how can kids use figurative language to make their own writing better? Like, do you think, are there any exercises that you can think of or 
um, advice you could give to be able to include those things more? Well, I think there are a lot of common phrases that we all use um, very frequently. And so to write those down, the common ones that we all use, like, um, oh, no, I can't think of any. But, That's okay. Uh, but then try and come up with a new way to say the same thing. Uh, you could even use the ones in my book uh, to <laughs> how figure out how you? would you say, you know, how would you say, describe that feeling yeah. where, you know, somebody's finding out this terrible thing that they're being sent to their death. How would you describe that feeling? So, yeah, I would suggest doing something like that. Well, and it sounds like you get a lot of inspiration just by paying attention to the details in real life. You know, the details that you see as you walk around, and that's been helpful to you as well. Absolutely, and that is really key, I think. Um, when I go to a coffee shop, uh, I don't go there to work because I'm too busy looking at everybody and watching what they're doing and how do they stand and how are they conversing? What are they saying to each other? And that helps me know how to write better dialogue. Um, and just, you know, listening and kind of being a spy a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> um, okay. Watching people interact with others is just so fascinating to me. And I think that really helps with my writing. Well, Lisa, we have a phone call, so we're going to go to that right now. They have a question for you. Caller, what is your name and what is your question for Miss McMahon? Hi, my name is Emily Fontana. I'm calling from Claremont, and my question is, what advice can you give us about writing our own stories? Oh, ooh, great question. So advice uh, for your, writing your own stories. Here's my best advice I can think of, and that is find the book that you love to read, the one that you've read over and over again, and I want you to read it again, and this time be a writer as you're reading, and I want you to think about there are places in this book that you can't wait to get to, right? Even though you know exactly what's going to happen, you want to get to this certain part. And it's maybe because it's dangerous, or maybe there's a friendship, or maybe there's a little bit of a love story or something. And um, I want you to take that passage and then kind of rewrite it in your own words with your own characters and see how, um, you know, how can you fulfill that thing inside of you that's making you go, I want to read this part so bad. I love this part. It's the best part. Because I think if you write the same kind of things that you love to read, that that is going to make you a better writer and you're going to have a lot more fun too. That's such great advice. Thank you. Well, we have um, some more questions from Glasgow, so we're going to go back to those students now. Hi, what's your question for Ms. McMahon? Um, well, I'm back, and my <laughs> question is, how do you plan the overall story for your books? Oh, wow, great question. How do question. I plan the overall story for my books? Well, I'm not someone who does a lot with outlines. Um, I know some writers do that, and I don't do that very well, because as soon as I write a whole outline for a book or even a whole series, I feel like I've already written it, and then I don't want to write it anymore. So I need to keep that uh, freshness there by not writing it all out step by step on how a book's going to happen. But um, I do write a couple of paragraphs. I need to know how it's going to end, or a general direction, and I need to know, you know, who are the characters and what are their particular things that they need to grow uh, with. Um, because we need that with books. We need characters who um, have a problem within themselves that they need to correct or figure out how it goes. So when I'm writing a whole series, I will have, uh, I'll have an idea of how the entire series ends, but um, I also need to know how each book within the series begins and ends so that we have an arc of each book but a, a general arc of the whole series. You were saying earlier that you write like a little biography for each character. Do you write that at the very beginning of your, kind of your journey of writing a book? I usually write that after I've been into the story a little bit. Um, you know, for instance, with The Unwanteds, with Alex and Aaron, I didn't know that much about them at first when I wrote the first chapter. But after a couple of chapters, that's when I start to know who the character is, and that's a good time for me 
to go and write, okay, here's the things that happened to them in the past. Um, so that's about when I do it. All right, so let's go back to Glasgow. I think we have another student. Hi, what's your name and what's your question? Hi, I'm Ahmed, and I would like to ask you, what is your schedule like, and do you have a favorite time or place um, you'd like to write in? Sure. Um, so my schedule is mostly I'm writing at home, and uh, except when I'm on the road, like I am now doing touring and that sort of thing. So when I'm home, I'm writing. And I usually get up, oh, seven or eight in the morning, have some coffee, check my email, and then I roll right into morning session. Um, then my husband and I take, uh, he's a writer too, uh, we take off for a few hours in the afternoon and we watch TV or go to the movies <laughs> or we do something creative like that where we can let our minds rest from the morning session and get rejuvenated again. And then around three or four in the afternoon, we do a second session. And that takes us into the evening. So um, I really like that schedule. We just have started doing this recently. And I really like it because I feel like I'm getting fresh ideas and feeling very fresh about the writing um, twice a day instead of just once. Uh, so that's how that goes. It's pretty exciting. Well, and I think that's such an interesting uh, point that your brain needs a break sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like you need to let it rest, you need to be inspired by other things, you can't, it's not always create, 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 create. So that's a really great message for our student writers. Yes, for sure. I think that the break time, the rest time, is almost more important than uh, the working time because you really do need to figure things out. And sometimes you just, your brain needs a break so that it can come up with a solution to the problem in the story that you're writing. Well, we have one more question, I think, from Glasgow. Let's go back. Hi, what's your name and what's your question? Hello, uh, my name is Luther, and my question is, uh, alive or dead, is there any author that you would like to have dinner with? Oh, oh my goodness. I would love to have dinner with J.K. Rowling, I think. That would be fantastic. Um, I do have a fun story, though, about an author I had dinner with. Uh, and that was Madeline L'Engle, and she oh, was wow. one of the first authors that I met when I was a young bookseller. I started working in a bookstore when I was 17, and I was the cashier person, um, and uh, so I never really got to meet the authors who came in to do mm -hmm. book signings and things, but she came in and she came up to me and asked me questions about what I was doing and going to college and wanting to be a writer, and I told her this, and then later she asked if I would join her for dinner with the other booksellers. Oh my and gosh. I was so cool because normally I was the one who would close up the store and you know close yeah. down the cash register while they all went off to dinner with the author. Yeah. But this time I got to go along because what, of her. And what book did she write? That she wrote A Wrinkle in Time yes. and many other books, but I'm sure that's the one most she people most are familiar with. Yeah. Yeah. What an ex extraordinary experience. Definitely. Did that inspire you to want to be, to be a writer, to continue with your pursuit? It absolutely did. You know, she really made a difference in my life by the fact that she gave me some attention and, and really seemed to care, even though I wasn't even 20 years old. I was uh, probably a freshman in college, and uh, it really made a difference. Wow. Yeah. Well, we have a, um, oh, we have one more student question. Hi, from Glasgow. Oh, nope. <laughs> Thank you so much, Glasgow. We're going to try to come back to you a little bit later in the show. Um, we have an email question. This one is from the Claremont Elementary School sixth grade book club. And this question is, how did Justine today and Mr. Today get to Quill and our time? Well, they Artemis, came sorry. from, yes, uh, they came from Warbler Island. So, and that, that's a little bit of a spoiler, but uh, if you keep reading, you'll learn a lot more about where they came from. And even in the quest series, I'm still coming back and discussing some things in the, in the story about the, what happened back then when Justine and Marcus were children along with uh, their other sister. So, yeah. Well, Lisa, our MTA crew chatted with a few Glasgow students and learned that they're big fans. Mm. They were willing to share their insights about the unwanted. Let's take a look. I really love all the fantasy elements brought into kind of a bland world 
where it's sort of the opposite. In many books I see, uh, they bring a sort of bland character into an extreme magical world or something like that. And it's, it's kind of nice to see the exact opposite where there's a group of characters and they're all building on each other and trying to learn about this new world. Well, the characters are very eccentric. They have a lot of personality. They have a lot of feeling to them. They, and overall, the characters really complement each other. The Stowe family had two sets of twins. The first twins, there were the protagonist and antagonist, Alex, and, and his brother, Aaron. They both have different personalities and different personality traits. But that's just what makes them very good characters. And then after that are two sisters, which eventually became very prevalent in Alex's life. I thought her character design was really, like, really good and was really developed. And I can really easily relate to the characters because I'm a twin. I can relate more to Alex because I'm a really artsy person. And I wouldn't say that I'm the best, but I really do enjoy doing art. I can feel like I relate to Aaron because he was as creative as his brother, but he didn't have as open of a mind, so he couldn't really wrap his mind around the idea of using his creativity. I would like to tell her that her series are very interesting, and I would like to see like, if she could do another series revolving around the Unwanteds, but not like maybe, let's say, the Unwanteds had kids. That would be a really interesting series to see how it would go. She added fantasy to a whole nother level. The writing was very creative. Where they brought this colorful, magical world into this dull, kind of almost robotic world. I thought that was really cool. The characters were well developed. Adding everyday common objects into magical weapons was a nice touch. I keep writing more books, I love them. Well, they certainly had some interesting observations and suggestions for you. For <laughs> is, sure. <laughs> is it hard for you to, um, how do you handle criticism from fans or from your editors? You know, it's, I think every artist has to take a moment if there's some criticism dealt them um, and just go, okay, I'm just going to listen to this and not immediately jump and say, you're wrong or yeah. you don't know what you're talking about. But there is that instinct and I think that continues all the time. I mean, I've written 24 books and I still have a moment like that every time I get an editor letter. But um, after it sinks in a little bit, I start to see, you know, that's a really good point. You're not trying to attack, attack me. That's not someone saying, you are a terrible person. That's someone saying, oh, this could be better, or this could be different, or I hope that you do this in the future. Um, and I can see that as a way for me to grow. You know, that's, I think, so important um, that we realize that everybody's trying to help. And, uh, you know, we can all grow, even if we've written 24 books or like tried to write one page, you know. That's wonderful advice. I think that's great Thank advice you. for writers or for anyone. Um, we have one last question for you. This is from our Glasgow students again. Hi, what's your question? Hi, my name is Julia. And um, our last question is, do you have any advice for aspiring writers? Absolutely. So I think one thing, as I mentioned before, a little bit about the aspiring writers um, to read the book and that you love over and over again, do that. But definitely read a lot of other books, too. And I want you to think about, like, what's my style? What kind of books do I just love so much? Maybe you love them all, and that's cool, too. Um, but if you <laughs> focus on, like, I really like realistic fiction, that's maybe you know what you want to write. So think about that. Well, thank you, Glasgow, for joining us today. It's been wonderful having you. And Lisa, thank you so much for being with us today. And happy birthday. Thank you so much. It's been a joy. It's been a pleasure. If you would like to learn more about Lisa McMahon, visit her website. To learn more about our upcoming programs, visit the Fairfax Network. For the Fairfax Network, I'm Emily Godfrey. Keep reading, keep writing, and keep dreaming. Thanks for watching.